<laughs> okay, hello, um, thanks for having me today. Um, my name's Laura Holden. Um, I work for Cheshire and Warrington Carers Trust and um, my role is Carers Coordinator. I support carers across Cheshire East and I also support uh, parent carers across Cheshire East and Cheshire West and I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about our organisation obviously as well. Um, I have been working for uh, well, working as in a role supporting carers since oh, 2008, I think. Uh, first worked for the Alzheimer's Society and then and then Cheshire and Warrington Carers Trust. Um, have had a little break and I started off my own business doing a lot of work um, with parent carers, actually, doing music sessions for children with additional needs. So, um, so yeah, I've always sort of worked with carers and um, and I've got personal experience of, of, um, of caring as well. Um, and I really thought that this would be important today to talk about um, because of the fact that so many females are in a caring role, just like like Kate mentioned, and how and how especially with the pandemic as well, it's had a huge impact. Um, so I've got a few figures for you. I don't want to bombard you with the figures, but <laughs> there's just a few here. Um, so today as it stands there's 13.6 million carers in the uk um, this has increased by about four and a half million during the pandemic um so and as you can imagine it's had a huge effect on on people's health and i think the fact that there hasn't been as many care services available to people and people not wanting to interact with with other people um has obviously meant that it's impacted on on families a lot more and they're having to provide their own care um um lost my train of thought there <laughs> oh that was it um what we're finding at the moment is there's a great um misunderstanding in the role of carers so people hear the word carer and they automatically assume a paid care worker um, but what I'm talking about is unpaid carers so a family member who is looking after a friend or a relative um who um is at home with them or not even in their home they might be in um you know in, in another home um but you are providing their their main caring support basically um i've just got to turn my video around the other way if i can <laughs> i've realized that it's um it, it just seems really weird looking at myself i've got it like hot so it's not mirrored <laughs> it just seems really strange uh i don't know if i can do it though never mind oh well um so um so yeah so we're talking about carers who are looking after a family member or friend or relative and i think that's the biggest um the hardest part really is actually identifying that you are a carer because so many of times you're just doing it because you support that person because that person is in your family they need help they need care and it's just naturally what we do as people it's human nature to care isn't it especially uh, parents um, supporting their children and often you know and especially with children with additional needs it might not be apparent that they have got any additional needs straight away anyway so it's quite a grey area as to what extra care you're providing and I think this is why a lot of people don't recognise that they are actually a carer. Um, so what we try to do at Cheshire and Warrington Carers Trust is to raise awareness of the roles that carers play in the community, um, you know, that they are separate from paid care workers, um, raise awareness of the huge amount of money that they save the government as well. Um, it's estimated to be a massive 77 billion a year. I think that figure's probably out of date now as well. <laughs> um, I think it's more than that, especially with the impact of coronavirus too. So um, so yeah, 77 billion a year though, uh, on because, the, because um, unpaid carers are providing that care at home rather than the person going in to um, statutory care or other care provision. Um, so, um, so yeah, we, we really want to help support carers get get information, advice and support that they need to help them in their caring role um, to, to raise awareness that these carers are doing this amazing work, even though they might not consider it as work and um, and help them to be better supported within our communities. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about Cheshire Warrington Carers Trust and what we do. Um, we um, we provide support to unpaid carers. We are a charity. We're part of the Carers Trust Network and there are quite a few carers organisations now within Cheshire. Um, we work alongside Cheshire East Carers Hub in Cheshire East and there's also Crossroads Together and they are all charity supporting carers, uh, for supporting general carers and then you get your more 
um, specific charities supporting people with specific illnesses and their carers. So that's kind of the difference. We're, we are there for all carers. Uh, within Cheshire West, um, we provide most of the carer services in Cheshire West and Chester, and we could subcontract out to, to some other organisations as well who work with us. So we all basically work together uh, trying to, perform, to provide the best support that we can. Um, and we work with, with GPs and health services. We work with social care, um, trying to create an all round approach to make sure that carers are recognised in the person with the care needs, um, health issues and, and support um, and to, to make sure their voice is heard as well because often the focus is all on the person with the care needs and um, and not always the considerations of the person who's looking after them the majority of the time. Um, so the the figure I really wanted to share with you and the what I feel has most relative on uh, relevance on International Women's Day is the fact that women are more likely to take on caring roles than men and it's probably no surprise is it because um, because women are natural carers, natural caregivers, really. Um, so the figure, it's not, it's not a huge amount more, but it does, it does provide a bit of significance, I think. Um, so um, out of the 13.6 million um, carers, it's in the UK, it's almost, almost 60% of women, of carers are women, and then 40% of carers are men. Um, and that figure um, sort of impacts a lot more on, on the age groups of, of women as well. So by the time a woman is 59 um she's got a 50 percent chance of having a caring role so basically at the age of 59 every one in every two women are going to have a caring role whereas that age that 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 figure doesn't come into play with men until they reach the age of around 75 and i think that just proves the fact that men are mostly caring for their wives um as they become older naturally due to age but women take on caring roles for a lot wider um wider family members so maybe maybe their parents um i think it's also due to the fact that women often um reduce their working hours so then they've technically got time spare to provide care to other members of the family and it you know it often does fall to that woman who's not working as much to to go and look after her parents um and obviously naturally to for women to look after their children if there's if they have any children with additional needs and then that might impact on their on their work as well um what's also interesting is is that one in seven people in the workforce are carers as well so they're juggling work and a caring role at home and often if that's a woman they're often juggling children as well so they've got um multiple roles basically um which which may impact on their ability to to progress in the workforce and to earn the, earn the money that they might have wanted to initially to do training to um, have a good pension in the future and that's why it's really important for people to um, to seek out all the help they possibly can to make sure that um, that you keep all those things in place and it doesn't have a negative impact on you and the things that you want um, from from your life so I've got a few a few sort of tips really on um, caring for somebody and if you, if you are a carer how to seek help and the kind of things that you that you might want to do and then um then what i'll do is sort of as we bring it to a close i'll i'll share a bit more about the specific support that we offer at the cheshire warrington carers trust and i'll share some pictures with you of some activities um, and things that we've done sorry i'm just gonna grab a sip of tea if that's okay have i got any questions kate anything you want me no, to No, just an observation about? someone was saying 77 billion a year oh right yeah and i think it's more than that now because the problem with the figures is they're often taken from the pre last census so when we haven't had a census for quite a long time <laughs> we don't get very yeah. up-to-date figures well, i think it's next month isn't it so it'd be interesting actually to yeah see. i think uh, so and i think quite timely i think yeah. with what's going yes. on it will have had a massive imp impact on it won't it at this the current situation um right okay so let's go through a few tips then is that okay for on on sort of how to get a bit of advice and support and and just things a bit of information for, for yourselves really um and then if you've got any specific questions as well that you want to ask me please please feel free so the first one is know where to go for advice and that's why i wanted to talk today really to tell you um about the carers organizations out there sometimes you can be bombarded by information it can be so difficult uh, because there's the way that a lot of charities work as well they they all get different pots of funding so there seems to be a lot of charities providing the same kind of support and 
we really want to make it easy and streamlined which is why we work together with all the other carer services so that if if you come to one of us you get the same support as you would if you went to any of the others um, so about knowing where to go for advice, if you feel lost, if you're not sure, if you just see a, no a load of numbers swimming on a, on a website or something like that, um, then the, uh, the best place to go, first of all, is, is, um, is your local council pages. If you type in carers and then your local authority, so Carers Cheshire East or Carers Cheshire West and Chester, they will have a page with the, um, the main contact details for your local carer services. So it might be us, it might be Carers Hub. So that's a really good place to start, because then if you call them, they can give you all the information and advice. Don't feel you have to contact all of them individually because you can. I've had so many carers who just go, I'm so lost. I don't know who anybody is. Um, you know, can I just have have the information I need? And, and anybody that you go to will will be able to do that. We've got a helpline, a dedicated helpline. I'll share the number at the end. Um, and that's a really good place to start as well. But like I say, the information and advice services from your local authority um, will also be able to help you. Um, so basically, once you've got that number and a number to call, that's that can be your sort of point of contact. Um, and and all all of the organisations supporting carers will be able to um, to provide you with support. There's also national organisations like Carers UK and Carers Trust who will have national helplines. So if there's information you want that applies to anybody, regardless of where you live, like benefits you can access, they're really useful as well. So yeah, know where to go for for advice. And and I'd say your local carers charity or local authority are the, the best places to start. Um, the next thing is. is um coping with your feelings and and sort of addressing the the personal impact it's going to have on you um because with caring comes a lot of feelings a lot of feelings of guilt and um, when you're looking after someone if a lot of carers find them putting themselves first find really really hard and when they do they feel guilty um they also feel like could they do more are they caring well enough and it's really you know, it, it, you can, I can easily say, yes, of course you are, you're doing an amazing job, but that's really hard to believe in yourself. So what I would do is try and talk to other carers, um, try and get information and advice, but mainly believe in yourself because that you know that person best. You know you've got the most knowledge about their care needs and don't let other people make you feel like you haven't because it's sometimes talking to professionals can be really hard because they come from a totally different view. Um, and they might say all the, the professional practical knowledge, but you know that person inside out and you might actually be the, the expert really in their care. Um, so have faith in yourself if you can. Um, believe in yourself and, and try not to feel guilty because I will discuss a bit later on as well. You are important as well and it doesn't always have to be all about them because the main thing is if you're not there looking after them, who else will? Um, so, so yeah, have faith in yourself. I think um, I just wanted to say on that, yeah. just from my own personal work at, um, in Motherwell as well, that that guilt is a huge one, and I dare say possibly more for a woman that you know, yeah, feel even guilty going for a haircut as an example. Um, I'm very fearful of judgment of others of what they may say to them. Definitely, yeah, Definitely. Um, and I think the, one of the big things when I started out in Motherwell was that self-care is so important like you've just said you, you know you can't pour from an empty cup can you so we've got to yeah. install that mentality as well definitely yeah I think I think guilt very much follows a woman round through their whole life doesn't it whatever role you're you're in as a mother and then as a carer and I think it's it's really hard you can you can sort of say well don't feel guilty but that's just that's words isn't it yeah yeah I think it's recognizing it's there for people and just encouraging them really yeah that's it and I think I think sharing and, and by contacting organizations who can help like yourselves like us I think that all starts to help and build you up and and sort of you know you probably will still feel guilty but it might just help it ease it a little bit um yeah, so yeah. definitely okay I'll all right again. <laughs> no worries um so and and like i just said in that last point the third point i wanted to make is about being assertive, assertive with professionals you are the expert and i just said that so you know this person's care and their care needs better than anybody else so yeah i, I sort of repeating the point again really but you are the best place person to advise on their care and what you want for their care um so don't feel that you have to take on 
every, I mean, take on board what professionals say, but don't feel you have to do with it. And your instinct is, is often going to be right. And if you ever want to speak to somebody else as a sounding board or have somebody else with you to represent you or advocate, advocate for you, you are allowed to do that. Um, so, so yeah, do, just, you know, a lot of people, I think, just take you know it's a professional speaking it's a doctor it's a social worker and you have to you feel like you have to do what they say um I wouldn't go the other way and be too assertive and and sort of tell them off either I think you have to learn how to speak to professionals and and that sort of becomes comes from believing in yourself as well and and being more comfortable in, in your caring role but I would I would say you probably know that person better than anybody else and you are in a really good position to to advise for them as well um handling difficult conversations um and telling people that you need a break so this might be telling professionals that you need a break and again comes from being assertive and being able to speak to them but i also might might actually mean talking to the person you're looking after as well and that's i think that's a really hard thing to do um to be able to to tell that person that you you you, you know you're at the end of your tether and and I think it's in your best interest to tell them and say actually if I am able to have a break I'll be able to care for you better we will understand each other better I'll be able to sort you better I won't be so stressed again that's going to come from a very difficult place but it's something that is, is really important for you to be able to do um so so yeah I think you do learn as a carer to become more resilient and be able to, to to approach those difficult conversations um and sometimes those difficult conversations might involve saying no as well um but we all we all have to learn to be comfortable with that don't we um noticing when we're stressed again going on talking about self-care I mean we when you are stressed it then becomes really difficult to care and provide effective care so noticing what your triggers are um what um what what sort of uh, me wh at what level you know you'll you'll need to take a step back because the worst thing is is if you're trying to look after someone but you're also having this um you know this argument as well or or it's it's pushing your buttons and, and winding you up and and then the caring role is in danger of breaking down so if you can if you're able to notice when you're stressed know when you need to take time out know when you need to get help um, obviously in the current situation that's been so difficult for, for carers because there hasn't been as much help available I know um, from personal point of view my, my mum uh, is a carer and she hasn't had her carers her paid carers coming in um, to look after the person she cares for because of coronavirus because of the risk so it, it does it puts extra strain doesn't it that's a year without any extra support so I think um, yeah sometimes again it's easier said than done but then is there anything else you can do can you take a break in another way um it might not be actually going out of the house it might be just shutting the door for 10 minutes and having some time to yourself and i'm going to talk a bit more about that as well with our the rest of our services gosh i hope i don't run out of time <laughs> um uh, so and again looking after your own health and well-being this is my sixth point but it kind of follows on they all sort of flow through each other um looking after your own health and well-being so recognizing when you're stressed but also making sure you are giving yourself that self-care that you need um keeping up with your own hobbies and interests so so important because so many carers lose their own identities through having a caring role and it becomes all about the person they're caring for um so it's really important to to, to try and keep your own hobbies and interests up even if that's just having a favorite program that you watch that makes you feel good at the end of the day that's that's still important that's still valuable um so making difficult decisions is something that that carers will have to face as well um and this is um i always think planning is better than than letting it happen and having to make the decisions in a in a in a rush and, in, and, and at your most stress points if you if when you're faced with the, the knowledge that you're going to have to care for somebody if you can bear to have a think about the future and what you want from from it, it all discuss it with the person you, you're caring for as well they might have different views so you might need to talk about it but I've always found that people who've planned and put things into place it, then when the situation arises it's much much less stressful it's still going to be difficult but it can just prepare you and then you've kind of got a plan to work to whereas if you suddenly find someone needs full-time care and you've got to put them into a care home when you're at your heightened stress levels as well and then there's the family haven't all discussed it it can then become even more difficult and put even more stress on everybody involved so if you can make some difficult decisions but do some planning as well um before before you need them really 
and maybe you won't even need them, but you've still got that in place. Um, number eight is keep your relationships fulfilling. So make sure, as a lot of people find that when they're caring for someone, they, they might lose friends. They might find that they haven't got time for the friendships they used to have. Um, and some carers even have said to me that people stop asking them because they they don't want to hear the answer they they might not want to know you know the situation all the time they, they probably can't bear it and can't process it themselves so the relationships you do have are really important that they are fulfilling to you they give you that break from the care, your caring role they're supportive and you might find that that comes from other carers so if you join a support group like the support groups that we run at Cheshire and Warrington Carers Trust um, you might actually make some amazing friendships of people who know what you're going through um, they're not going to know exactly what you're going through but they're going to have a good idea compared to somebody who might not so it might mean that you need to um, to look at your look at the people in your life and think is this relationship working for me because if it's a relationship that actually just takes from you when you haven't got much left to give it it might not be one that's that's worthwhile and you might find that other people are out there who know exactly how you feel and you just haven't spoken to them yet and I think even though we're not able to speak to as many people in person at the moment are, are we've still been running our support groups on zoom and they've been so valuable for people um just to be able to have a chat on zoom and uh, we've been doing activities as well it's, it's been really nice a way of keeping people in touch with each other um so two more to go two more little sort of tips and and bits to focus on um adapting to changing circumstances again a, bit, a little bit more about planning i suppose uh, making sure you do are adaptable if we if we resist change we might not be able to move on and make our circumstances better um so change might be having extra care in looking after somebody it might have to mean changing schools for a child where they can get better supported it's really hard and you might want to have those dis discussions with with that person before it happens again and with the rest of the family get all the family involved um but i think being adaptable is is something we need to do as a, as a carer because the situation will always change all the time and you might not um you know always be prepared for it uh and the last thing is um is but keep a sense of humor i think that's a really important thing and there's some really good books as well one of them is called the selfish pig's guide to caring um read things like that keep a sense of humor i think you really need it when you're a carer and, and sometimes you can see the funny side about it keep keep a, a sense of humor with the person that you're you're caring for as well lighten the, the mood a bit if you can um and make sure that relationship still still stays happy and alive as well so they're my top 10 tips is that i've just seen someone's in the waiting room do you want me to, as i'm host do you need do you need me to let them in or oh, um, no no it's that'd be the next one as well i'm person. just saying you've got um, a comment here yeah. um and this is somebody that works at the neuromuscular center so okay. very much knows about carers and she's just said that your whole you know topic is so important at the moment the pandemic has made life harder for so many carers as has made it so much harder for them to take time for themselves yeah it has so I'll, uh, that leads on nicely then if I tell you a little bit about the things we've been doing how we've adapted our services through the pandemic then um so we 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 obviously have had to stop our face-to-face -face support we we felt like even though some support groups have been able to run during lockdown because of the nature of people we're working with are so vulnerable we didn't feel it was appropriate and we have managed through zoom um through telephone calls, through WhatsApp groups, we've, we've sort of done it in any way we can, but also in providing um, packages <laughs> for people. Um, we've, we've done pamper packs because they haven't been able to have the relaxation therapies we'd normally provide. Um, we have, I've done so many doorstep drops <laughs> and and a lot of doorstep chats actually as well with people when they've wanted to. And, and I think even that is just, you know, receiving a package and know, knowing someone's out there looking after you as well has been really meaningful for a lot of carers um we've our work with children we've done a lot of craft packs and half term activities using zoom and facebook live and um and what i found is obviously families are so busy with homeschooling at the moment most of our successful things have been things that they can dip in and out of so using our facebook groups to share activities but that they can work through it in their own time so if you don't mind i'll i'll share my screen and i'll just yeah and i've got a couple of questions if that's okay while you uh, somebody's asked do you advocate if a carer is unable to see or plan for their future um so we I wouldn't I, it depends when they well where they mean advocate as in a very professional uh capacity do they mean in at a like a a board or a 
on on paper or that sort of thing or is it just going through talking through it, it? doesn't say so if you are listening elizabeth if you can just expand on the question and then um, we can go back to it caroline has said um such a good presentation um sorry it keeps clicking up i'm sure so many will appreciate watching this as a recording oh. i know how tough i found it as a carer and despite my professional life i felt so incapable at times as a carer and didn't know what i needed to know with regard to the care system yeah i think that's it and a lot of people find out things too late so i it, i feel like if if at the point of diagnosis I mean, it's, it's, there's only so much doctors can give, but if they can do that little bit extra of referring the person to a carer's centre or to a carer's organisation, then they've got that help from the start. And we're working with GP surgeries to, to encourage that more and more in Cheshire East and in Cheshire West and in, in Cheshire East Carers Hub are doing that as well. So, Laura, um, sorry, Elizabeth said, um, expanded on it. She means as in young carers. Oh, OK. So their, their futures. Yes, yeah, so our, we don't actually cover young carers. Um, so there are other, there are Cheshire young carers who cover young carers in Cheshire East and Cheshire yeah. West, and also um, Carers Hub have a young carers hub, and Crossroads together do uh, support young carers as well. So they would be the young in, in organisations you would want to speak to, depending on where you live, um, about advocacy for young carers. But we have got a Young Carers Action Day coming up on the 16th of March. And I'll, if it's OK, I'll post about that in the group after or in the event. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because that's going to be a celebration. And we are going, we have a project that's supporting young adult carers when they come out of young carers services up to the age of 25. Because I think that's like a missing age group where they come out of school or education. They don't necessarily want to go to the groups that older carers go to so it's this little gap in between and we're going to be launching a project around that soon so I'm just going to um share I'll just share a, a, some pictures of some activities we have done if that's okay just so you can see a little bit um and I hope it works as well there we go <laughs> oh it's going too fast so these are some things we did during October when we actually could go get out and do um some physical um sessions we went to dorothy clive gardens uh, that first one was a was a dinner we had like a, a little lunch group so these are the things we'd like to do more of obviously as the restrictions ease as well um these are the packages i've been sending out to people i just thought that would remind me to talk about it but yeah our pamper packs um makeup packs we've been sending out as well uh, so lots of people have been receiving packages we have done some sessions like flower arranging wreath making um, on Zoom and we did manage to do some in person. We've got a flower aging session coming up uh, this month as well, if anyone would like something like that, making spring Easter, ba Easter baskets. This was an amazing event we did. We went on an alpaca trek. This was in October when we, when we were able to do some physical events, but the, the therapeutic benefits of doing this were amazing. This was for carers and the people they're caring for. So this is uh, a carer called Jill and her son who she cares for. Um, and this was, just so lovely because the the carers found it therapeutic and the people they cared for found it therapeutic petting the animals walking the, them oh it was so nice um i took my kids as well that's my son in the front <laughs> but it was just just nice getting out there and doing something like this and that was the little baby baby alpaca sorry not llama um we did some halloween activities they that's my son actually because i have a lot of them are my kids joining in because i've had them at home so much <laughs> um but we did uh, we made these craft packs and sent them out to carers and then we did them live together on facebook in our parent carer group we did some pottery painting as well um that's me glowing because i'd we'd done a facial massage <laughs> on a camp <laughs> night on zoom <laughs> um but that was just encouraging people to take some time out this was a, a, a zoom yoga session we did um this is one of our carers little craft project that she made she crocheted these um lovely mr and mrs claws and then she donated them as a raffle prize as well but we really encourage crafty sessions and i think that's quite a nice way to um to have a bit of an outlet and a bit of a, something for yourself this was a card making session we did for christmas um and this was some wreath making we managed to do a session in person as well um and this was kind of like junk creek wreath making bit out of scrappy bits <laughs> um, which was really nice so there's some of the finished products this is our parent carer group 
Um, and then we did um, some pottery as well, pottery painting for adults. We've done it for children and for adults. And this was really um, beneficial as well, just sitting, painting. The, the ladies just found it so, so nice. And the gentlemen, actually, there wasn't just ladies there. Um, so, so, yeah. And that's some of the finished products, which was amazing to see how creative our carers could be. Um, and then we did at Christmas, we did like, a, oh, this was something I did, little crafty uh, gift wrap um showing people how to do ribbons bows out of old magazines um or baubles um some of our our raffle prizes and, and and pamper packages and things that we've we've sent out to people again uh our pamper packs include a nail set so that was uh, some beautiful nails <laughs> after the results um but yeah i just thought it would be a selection of things and then this is the latest thing we've had so we've had a makeup amnesty from i think it's mainly come from superdrug um who've donated end of line stock um and we've been doing we did a pamper evening which i had 19 carers join me for when we did a bit of a makeover and um sending them out some um some makeup packs which has been really nice and then a slime session as well for children um over half t uh when was it half term yeah the last half term we had and then this was just before christmas again just meeting up we did a walk in the park and a and a meeting in in the cafe so when we when we've been able to we've done you know in person things and then this is the, the last picture i think this is a little girl who we've been supporting and um we've been said because we haven't been able to run, run all the activities we'd usually do we um offered small amounts of money to buy something for the family that would help and this family she chose to buy a weighted blanket for their little girl this is that's what this is on her and um because of her condition she hasn't she didn't settle at all during lockdown being away from nursery change of routine and this weighted blanket allowed her to um settle basically it gave her a bit of security they managed to have a cinema night um with her other siblings and she actually sit, sat through the whole film which her mum said was just such an achievement for her um so it's just i just thought i'd share a few of these just showing what you know what differences it has made to people this is some art materials we sent to one family um it was just to, for, it was for a child to take some time out develop their skills as well um yeah i think that's it so there we go just some examples of the kind of things we've done so we've just really been open to whatever um whatever would give someone a break because because we were encouraging breaks we're encouraging self-care um we're encouraging, encouraging breaks for the whole family as well but because as we can't put those things on we're open to a family deciding what would benefit them the most some of them have teamed up with other carers as well to try and um, get that social interaction so one group of carers in Congleton are, are doing a zoom afternoon tea so we're funding about 20 afternoon teas <laughs> and they're all going to do it online together which will be lovely um, so if anybody feels that they do need something like that and would benefit from it um, then then please get in touch and the main thing I I want to say is self-care is not selfish it's so important and and these things hopefully will just encourage you to do that I mean that's that's what my main project that I run is all about is about carer breaks um so so yeah oh, thank you very very much um, I've had some lovely comments just saying how important it is to um discuss that